Okay, in the last video we brought in a new notation to really emphasize the dependence that functions have, you know, that functions are a relationship between two variables. So let's work with this a little bit more. We'll see this more in, um, in later sections. But for now, let me just make up an example on the spot here. I'm going to say we have a function f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 4. And what I want to do is I want to evaluate the function at, you know, different points. So this is telling me that when x is 2, f is something. So if I plug 2 in for x, I get 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus 4. Well, that's 4 minus 4 plus 4. That's just going to be 0 plus 4 or 4. So f of 2 is 4. And it's really just that simple. What's ever inside the parentheses here, go to the right-hand side of the definition and replace each occurrence of x with whatever, whatever happens to be inside the parentheses here. And so this is telling me that if I graphed this parabola, that when x is 2, y is 4, this point is on the graph of f of x. So this gives us another way to write points that we can put f of the x value equals the y value and describe a point on the graph of f of x. But that's a side note. Let's take a look at you know, f of 3. And I realize for consistency, I'm going to switch this up a little bit by replacing x with 3 but putting what's inside the parentheses in parentheses every time I replace. This will be useful a little bit later on. Oops, not so much here. This shouldn't be an x, this should be a 3 right there, not an x. So 3 squared is 9, 2 times 3 is 6, add 4 and I get 3 plus 4 which is 7. So f of 3 is 7. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So what if we mixed it up a bit? Not looking at a number here. I gave you another letter. So if we follow what I said before, just replace x with a. Every time it occurs on the right hand side. So this is just a squared minus 2a plus 4. That's what f of a is. When x equals a, this is the output. Now, before I go to the example that always trips people up, let me do something absurd. F of Kevin. What is F of Kevin going to be? Well, 
just following the rules, every time there was an X on the right hand side, here, I'm going to replace it with Kevin. So it's going to be Kevin squared minus 2 times Kevin plus 4. So this is just written a bit more simply without all those parentheses. Kevin squared minus 2 Kevin plus 4. That is f of Kevin. I do this absurd example because this trips everyone up. It's a common, a common problem for college algebra students. But it really shouldn't be. Because if you can follow this absurd example where x equals Kevin, you should be able to follow this. All I'm doing here is I'm putting in a bunch of letters that happen to spell out a common English name. Here, I've got a bunch of characters that spell out a common mathematical phrase. There's really no difference between these two. But for whatever reason, this always trips people up. So, whenever you see something complicated like this, think of f of Kevin, or f of whatever, watermelon, I, whatever word you want, it doesn't matter. So, following the rules, all I do is I take a plus h and replace it, uh, replace x with a plus h. So, this will be a plus h squared minus 2 times a plus h plus 4. Now if you wanted to you could multiply this out you know, foil it or uh, distribute it if you wish but really I'm just gonna leave that's not the point of this exercise so I'll just distribute the minus 2 and say you know, that's my answer. Oops, I missed my squared. There we go. That's my answer. it worked exactly the way Kevin did. There was absolutely no difference. The only difference was the characters that I used. You know, A plus sign H here K-E-V-I-N. That's really the only difference.